Welcome to Word of Peace. Welcome to Word of Peace. We are so glad that you are here as you're entering into the sanctuary or joining us online. We uh, welcome you to worship today. Um, as you prepare your hearts and minds for worship, we offer up this song. It's called Trust in You by Lauren Dale. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I, I am Pastor Rick, and on behalf of the pastors and staff here at Word of Peace, welcome to worship. It is so wonderful to have you joining here together this morning, and a special welcome to those new to Word of Peace. We'd love to get to know you more. If you're new here, we have connection cards at the doors in the back, and a special gift for you at the welcome desk. Also, you can go online to fill out a connection card there at wordofpeace.org. 
And speaking of online, welcome to all of you as well joining us online today. Wonderful to have you here as well. Today we begin a new worship series called Pillars of Faith as we look at the book of Hebrews in the New Testament and also the Gospel of Luke. We see how faith impacts our lives. And so today we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 11, the great chapter about faith and how faith and all are welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion. We have lots going on in the life of our church. First of all, hear about the missionaries we support. Patrick and Jackie Benke, missionaries to Japan. They will be here tomorrow night for our 6.30 worship service. It will be a different worship service than this morning as we will hear a message that they will share. And then after worship, They'll give a presentation along with some question and answer time around ice cream sundaes. So we've got that to enjoy after worship tomorrow night. And then also, you can help out uh, with school supplies for Elk River and Rogers schools. We have a box out in the gathering area. Bring in those su supplies. It's through Thrivent Financial as we uh, get supplies in to help children in our areas out in our area schools out with their supplies and then a reminder high schoolers we have a hangout time on Wednesday you can come to the bonfire pit and high schoolers enjoy a time of being together and then we need your help we are looking for feedback on our online worship so especially you online We'd love to have you go to our website, fill out a, a survey there about our online worship. Also, you can pick up a paper copy of that survey at the welcome desk. Well, I invite you now to please stand and we'll join together in singing our gathering song.
mean? I can't help but think of Vacation Bible School many years ago with our eagle wings. You lift us up like eagles on eagle's wings. Woohoo! Where are all my big kids, huh? Indeed, God's love lifts, lifts us up like the wings of an eagle, and we hear the good news and confession and forgiveness that although we are imperfect, and it is important to say I'm sorry to everyone we know, because none of us are perfect. Despite our imperfections, God says, I have love and grace for you, and we hear that in confession and forgiveness. So let's join in together, together now in those words. Blessed be the Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and in one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now let us pray together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, but I ask all the kids that are here today to come on forward. so good to see all of you. Come on up. Oh, look at all your wonderful, beautiful faces. Goodness, it's good to see all of you. Come on up. So, I hope all of you had a really, really good week. It is so good to see all of you. All of you are such a blessing. So, I want to tell you something. I have three children, and they're all pretty much grown up. And you know what? I know that they love me. I know that they like me. And I have the faith that they do. But sometimes it's really hard to remember that because they're not always around me anymore. One of them's married and out working, one's working a job in St. Paul, and the other is about ready to head off to college, and they're not around me all the time. And gosh, sometimes I need to be reminded that they love me. So I want to show you a few things. They gave me things that help remind me, even when they're not around, that they love me. The first is something that my son gave me when he was about five years old. He was with his dad. And he was at um, a gift store, and he saw this, and he said, Hey, Dad, those are Mom's favorite colors, and this reminds me of Mom. So they came home from the drugstore with this little cross that hangs in the window, this little sun catcher. And I hang it in my house, and every time I look at it, I remember that Martin loves me, and I remember when he was five. And then my girls, when they were all grown up, one Mother's Day, they said, we know, Mom, your favorite things are dogs, hiking, and mountains, and water, and we want to remind you that we love you. So they gave me this. They had this picture taken and framed of me. This is me in Colorado with my beloved golden retriever lab dog and my two little girls who aren't little anymore. And every time I look at that picture, I remember, oh, they love me, and they're with me. Well, Pastor Rick is going to tell a Bible verse today that talks about faith. And faith is often 
believing in something we can't see or touch or feel. We can't see, touch, or feel it. So you know what, what we do? We look to others around us to help give us faith. And so there are lots of people in this book. How many of you have this? Do you, have, you used to? Yeah, you probably have an older one now, right? This is the Spark Bible that we give all the kids. And inside of it are stories about people who have faith in God who live their lives by faith. And they help remind us how to walk in faith and what to do in faith when we don't feel like we might have the faith to go on. Now, I want you to look at all those people out there. Do you see all those people sitting in the seats? Those are saints. They have the same job. They are all witnesses to Jesus' love for you, and they help remind all of us how to have faith, even when we can't see it or touch it or feel it or taste it. There's all kinds of ways that we receive the witness of God. In fact, we have these out in the gathering area. How many of you want, use once, these once in a while? Do you? These are our busy bags because you know what? They're packed full of things that build faith, stories and coloring books and books and things that keep our hands busy. But you know what? We know even when our hands are busy, we're listening, and it's a witness of hearing God's word in church too. There's all kinds of tools that help us to have faith. And sometimes we show up in this church, everybody, and we may not feel like we have faith. And that's okay, because all of us will have faith for you even when you don't. So my prayer for you today is that sometimes, even when you can't see, touch, or feel, or taste the love of God, that this congregation, that your families, will remind you of that love. One of which is I'm hoping your parents today, I'll take this out today and read you some stories out of it because that's one way we give faith to people, right? So let's pray. I need you to repeat after me. You ready? Dear God, thank you for the faith you give us. Thank you for the people who help us have faith. Lift us up in your love. Amen. Amen. Have a great morning. It's good to see all of you. Thanks for being here today. Please stand for the reading of Hebrews. <clears throat> A reading from Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not seen, not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received the power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah, was barren, Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful for, had, for who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, having, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land they had been they had left behind, they would have 
had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. feel or have you ever felt like your tank has been empty when it comes to your faith or practicing your faith? That because of life's challenges or the state of the world or just because of the tediousness and boredom of it all, there just hasn't been that much when it comes to your faith life. There's not much there. The letter to the Hebrews was addressed to a people whose faith was becoming empty. It was a congregation in which people were drifting away, and there was a sense of apathy and a loss of vitality. And so the author of Hebrews has all kinds of images of how God gives us the gift of faith and how we can trust God. And that is what we have today, these images in Hebrews 11. Images of these great ancestors of the Bible who lived their lives by faith and accomplished what they did by faith. Abel and Noah, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Moses and Rahab, Gideon and David and the disciples of Jesus. They all lived out their everyday lives and accomplished what they did by faith. But faith isn't just some kind of magical resource that we have in our lives. It's it's not just something that can all of a sudden magically get everything done for us. A nun who works for a local home health care agency was out making her rounds when her car ran out of gas. As luck would have it, there is a service station just down the street. But since she was so busy running around and her time was so precious in making her visits, she didn't have time to get the car back to a mechanic at the service station. In fact, she was out of gas, and so she looked all around her car looking for some type of container or can to bring back to the service station to get some gas. And all she found as she looked around was one of her bedpans that she was going to bring to a patient. Always resourceful, she decided to carry that bedpan all the way back to the service station to get gas for her car. And then when she came back, as she was pouring the gasoline from her bedpan into the tank of her car, two men just happened to be walking by at that time. And one of them said to the other, now that is what I call faith. (laughs) But faith isn't some kind of magical resource that we have in our lives. But the faith that God gives to you and to me is something that we put into practice every day of our lives. It affects our everyday decisions and actions. But how do we do that? How do we have faith be a part of our everyday lives? Well, if we want to look at faith and how faith can be a part of our everyday lives, 
then we're looking in the right place when we're looking at Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, especially chapter 11. Because chapter 11 of Hebrews is known as God's Hall of Fame. Or maybe we should say God's Hall of Faith. As I noted before, it lists the greatest women and men of faith in the Bible and how they live their lives by faith and how far faith was a part of their everyday lives. And so we can look at them and their example to see how faith can be a part of our everyday lives. And first we see that faith is believing even if we don't see. Faith is believing even if we don't see. We hear that right away in Hebrews 11, verse 1, where it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We read here and we see here that the nature of faith is knowledge that's based on promises, not on that which we can see. It is visualizing the future in the present. It is seeing it in advance and being certain of that which we do not see. But as human beings, we like to see it before we believe it. But God says, no, you've got that backwards. Some things, you have to believe it in order to see it. And this is exactly what Jesus was about. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he appeared to his disciple Thomas, who did not believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And Jesus said to him in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Whether you're an architect planning a building or an artist creating a sculpture or a scientist who wants to put an astronaut on Mars, you have to believe it before you see it. And it is true with our everyday lives with God. God gives you and I the gift of faith so that we can believe it before we see it. That's what the Bible tells us, what faith is, believing even though we don't see it. Faith is also obeying, even though we don't understand it. And for this, we look to the example of Abraham that's put forth in our reading for today. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 tells us, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. Here Abraham is 75 years of age. And at age 75, God calls him to go on a new adventure. And by the way, God says to him, you're going to be a father. Not only of a son of your own, but also of a, a great nation. God basically was saying when Abraham was at the point where he wanted to retire and to hang it up, God is saying, no, get it down and go. Because, but I'm sure Abraham had all kinds of doubts and questions in the midst of that. But because Abraham obeyed, even though he didn't understand it, he became the father of a nation called Israel. And many people have been blessed through him, including you and me. There are a lot of times when our faith doesn't make sense. Like having faith in a good God when we see the problems that exist in the world. Or believing that God is present with you when you are hurting or angry or bitter. Or here's one for you. How about forgiving someone when they have hurt you? Or 
mistreated you. There are many times in our lives when our faith doesn't make much sense. But God promises to be involved in our lives every day so that we can know God and trust God. So faith is believing, even when we don't see it. It's trusting, or excuse me, it's obeying even when we don't understand it. And then it's just what I said. Then we read that it's trusting. Trusting even when we don't get it. A woman who lived in San Francisco got on the bus to go downtown. It was the first time she'd been on a bus. She had just moved to San Francisco. And it came to the time where the bus was going to stop at the stop she wanted, and so she went to get off the bus, and the rear door wouldn't open. Well, she panicked. She yelled out to the whole bus and to the bus driver, Back door! Back door! And all of a sudden, everyone on the bus started chiming in and telling her, you need to step down before the door will automatically open up for you. Well, how many times does that happen in our lives? When doors in life don't open to us because we don't step down. We don't step out or we don't take that first step. Today's reading tells us that we can trust even though we don't get it. Notice that in verse 13 we are told that all of these great people of faith, I mean it just lists all these great people of faith that they they didn't receive the promises. They did all that they did without receiving those promises. And it shows us there are times in our lives where God giving us the gift of faith doesn't mean that we'll always be well. It doesn't mean that there will never be any problems or it doesn't mean that we're always going to be okay. But faith is trusting. It's stepping out even when we don't know what we're doing. And even when things are different from the way that we thought they would be. But then verse 13 goes on. It tells us that even though these great people of faith, they didn't receive their promises in their lifetime, but they could see them, just like us. They could see those great promises. They could see the promised homeland, we are told. They could see a better country, a heavenly one. And so can you and I. We can trust that God has prepared a city for us as well. God gives to you and I the gift of faith in our everyday lives so that we can believe even though we don't understand. We can obey even though we're not quite sure And we can trust even if we don't get it. Indeed, God gives you and I the gift of faith that works in our lives every day. And this is how God fills us up, especially when we feel empty. May we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for that gift of faith that comes from beyond us. And it's a gift, Lord, that's not only active in our lives, but we can see by the great witness of others how it is active, by all these great people of the Bible that are listed in Hebrews chapter 11. And so may that inspire us to live like they did and to know, Lord, indeed, that your faith is in our lives, helping us to believe and obey and trust and to fill our tanks when we are empty. We thank you for this gift in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to stand and join us in singing.
we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we sing holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory the earth is filled with his glory we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we sing holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us pray for one another, for God's creation, and for God's church. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who are here today and all who proclaim Jesus' good news with faith from the Holy Spirit. Equip your saints to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home in places of extreme temperatures, floods, or fire. We pray for relief. Fashion us to be good stewards of your water and forests and animals so that all may thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Let your loving kindness be upon your word and world. Be our helper and our shield in places that are torn by strife and violence. Raise us up to be courageous neighbors and leaders to serve our communities with compassion and justice. Lord, in your mercy, 
Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who struggle with sobriety, who live with depression, who feel misunderstood. Fill them with your steadfast love. Console all those who are ill or hurt and strengthen those who care for them. We pray, especially this week, for Bobby Joe and Carson and Lou and Faye and Greg and Sue and Jim and Lowell and Lou and Katie and Emmy and Jason and Jamie and Megan and Tom and Sharon and Joyce and Corey and Dan and Bill and Fred and Kelly. And now, Lord, hear the prayers in our hearts for the people in our lives. Embrace those who cry out to you in grief, for those experiencing the end of a friendship or relationship, for those experiencing the death of people they love. Especially this week, Lord, for Amy and Mike Vestal and family mourning the death of Amy's mother, and Paula and Tom Benson mourning the death of their beloved friend, Mark. Lord, in your mercy. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Help us listen to one another, understand one another, forgive one another, be kind to one another, and strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation that we may care for all those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we celebrate and bless the time of Ox Lake and Wapo and Luther Crest. Lord, fill them with your spirit and love. Shape them. Give them your faith. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember all the saints, both living and those who have died, who share Jesus' love with us and place their hope in you. So strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Lord, in your mercy. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Indeed, we have a generous God, and thanks to your generosity, we're able to send kids to camp. We're able to help families in need, and just this week, we helped two families out that are going through really tough things with health concerns, so thank you for your generosity. So now, we receive our offerings, and we give back to God all that God has given us, ourselves, our time, and all that we possess.
I ask you to please stand as the offering is brought forward and let us pray together our offering prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Indeed, we get to experience life-giving faith at the altar table in the bread and the wine. And I loved what one of my professors always said, when we are struggling with faith, when we don't think we have it, we can taste it, we can feel it, we can touch it in the bread and the wine as it produces faith in us. So on the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he gave thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave it all to drink, saying, Take and drink, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for the forgiveness of all people. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, Jesus, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Know that all of you here today are welcome to come forward for Holy Communion. If you prefer grape juice to wine, just raise your index finger. If you need a gluten-free waiver, please just tell your server. Come to the table. It is prepared and it is for you. Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture. 
I don't think there's anything more beautiful than seeing the people of God come forward to take the bread and the wine and all knowing that as vastly different as we are, we're all reconciled in Christ and that God loves us. And I never take for granted when we can gather in person and do that. So what a blessing. Please stand for a blessing. Now may the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you not just today, but your entire life. Amen. And now, good people, a word of peace. May the Holy Spirit fill you this week with faith. When you struggle with it, look to your neighbor and know that God loves you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up God's favor upon you and give you peace. Amen. people of God, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.